I just didn't buy it. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna get out of here and do that. I had that little power of persuasion. The power, the recognition. Thinking back as a child, um, my grandmother ended up raising me way out in the country. And, and I, I would think, I would classify us as being pretty poor. I mean, um, I, my, my toy was a stick horse, and it was a stick <laughs> with a string. And uh, I just remember seeing a lot of uh, happy people. Uh, and I used to sneak down the railroad track and, and watch them. And I'd ask my grandma, I'd say, why don't I have any of this? I mean, why, don't, why can't I have a bike and, a, and all those cars and pools? And she'd tell me, she'd say, uh, those people are miserable. You know, they, they, those people with money, they're just, that's all that is, it gives them, they're just miserable. And, I, and uh, so I watched them, you know, and they, they didn't look miserable to me. They looked like they were having a lot of fun. And so, um, you know, I, I kept thinking, you know, boy, if I ever get out of here, I, I'm going to have it. I, I'm going to be happy and I'm going to have a lot of money and I'm going to have uh, you know, all the things that, that, that I don't have now. And I'm going to have a good family, and I'm going to have kids, and I'm going to have a big house. And So I, I just was sick of poverty, and I just knew I was going to have a lot of money someday, and that was my goal. I didn't know about Jesus. I was raised in Catholicism, and it was all about being good or going to hell. You know, the, the rules and regulations, I didn't like that. That wasn't any fun. I didn't like going to church. Um, and I never had read the Bible, didn't know anything about that. In fact, I really wasn't sure there was a God at all. I mean, I was told there was, but I didn't buy that. Uh, but I knew there was money, and I knew there was happiness, and there was girls, and there was music, and the more I looked into it, the more I liked that idea. So I was playing in, a, sneaking in clubs, playing in a band real early. Uh, learned to play the bass, and because uh, they needed a bass player, so I lied and told them I played the bass, and learned it. <laughs> and. Uh, Started getting involved with music, um, and just that was my world, because that, that was where I was king. That was where, that was my pleasure. And then started playing in bands. I recorded a couple of records. One that was 35 in the Nation, Cashbox Magazine. You know, I was being called to make appearances. Uh, all this I could do the Cadillacs, man. You know, it was gonna be great. I, then it, when I realized as I got older that it wasn't in the music, that I, I was not going to reach that dream, then I think I switched to relationships, you know. I started reading personal development books, you know, uh, what the mind of man can conceive and believe it can achieve, all that stuff, Napoleon Hill, you name it, I read it. And I got really involved in that. And uh, it changed my life. It was something different. I never, I never knew about, uh, you know, uh, responding to life rather than reacting. I never knew that we control our destiny, that we had a mind that we could make decisions on our own. Uh, that had not been my world. And so when I started doing that, I just loved it. And I read book after book after book. And understanding, I didn't know where the power was coming from. But I thought it was in my mind, you know, the power of the human mind, you know. So man, I was in it. And uh, I recorded tapes and I got very good at that and earned just a lot of money and uh, they'd fly me around on a Learjet uh, and stop in one city and another city and they'd roll out the red carpet and the police escorts and the baskets and the people, oh it was just, you were a celebrity. And, and the money in one month was more than what people make in a year or two and uh, it was, oh my goodness, it was unbelievable, I just didn't, couldn't believe it was happening. And that went on for years, uh, travel and, uh, you know, just uh, selling tapes and books and speaking to people. And I had so many toys. It was just a, a, this thing of money and buying stuff and maybe this will be it. And everything from cars to airplanes to you name it. And uh, it, it was this hole and, and I, I just didn't know what it was. I was in my office one day, a three-story place of it. I had a private office on the third floor. And, sitting there one day and, and I found myself, I reached this point where I didn't have anything to do. I didn't have to work. I was only working one day a week and that was to go fly somewhere and speak. And then um, I, I had everything I wanted and I just knew if I ever got there, 
that that was going to be it. I was going to be there. I was going to be happy, and it was horrible. It was a it was a terrible thing to uh, to be that lonely and have that much and have nothing, have nothing, and and. I didn't really know what to do because all those years I had tried to find it and been towards it and when I finally got there it wasn't there. It was horrible.